So, you know, one of the things that I find very interesting is that the secrets to success, literally as Earl Nightingale would talk about in The Strangest Secret in the World, the secrets come down to basic fundamental laws. You know, I learned a lot of these secrets by reading this book right here, The Richest Man in Babylon, where he talks about the seven laws of gold or the seven rules of gold. Whichever way you wanna do it, they are laws. Now think about a law. Think about the law of gravity. The law of gravity basically cannot be bent. Try it. Go to the top of a building and jump off. The law of gravity will kick in and well, that probably gonna hurt. Hopefully it's not a high building. So when you think about laws, they must happen. So there's several laws that go into wealth, all derived from this amazing book, The Richest Man in Babylon, which every one of you should read. But that book was written a long time ago. And that book is written in a different tongue. It's a bit difficult to understand for some people. So what I've done is I've summed up the seven laws of gold. Into what we know today to be the six laws of wealth. And these laws can be found throughout time in so many different writings, including the Bible, spoken by so many wise men and women. So these are things that you already know, but you probably don't apply in your life. And how do I know you don't apply these? Because I look at the data, I look at based on statistics in this country and savings rates in this country as of today, December 2023, these laws are not being followed. So what I want to do is just a quick video to outline the six laws of wealth. And then what I'll do is I'll read you the 10 rules to prosperity. So first there's the laws and then there's the rules. So law number one, you must keep 10% of the money you make. Now this is in the Bible. This has been all over. You already should know this 10%, the 10% rule. For every dollar you make, you should save 10 cents. For every hundred you make, you should save $10. Are you doing this? Well, statistics say no, but this is a law. In order for the next five laws to work, this one must be abided. And it's literally simple. Figure out how much your gross income is, multiply it times 10% and set up a systematic savings pro program. It doesn't matter where that money goes. I don't care if it goes into a specially designed and engineered whole life policy or a bank account or a money market, just save 10%. And when I taught my daughter this in a letter that I wrote her, which turned into my TEDx talk, I taught her how she should always keep 10%. Notice how I didn't say save. I said keep. Because what you keep is yours to use. What you give away is no longer yours. Which leads me to law number two. The second law of wealth is simple. Now we've saved some money. Now the second law of wealth says your money must go to work for you. So think about that. Your money that you've saved or kept now must go to work for you. But you see your whole life, you've spent your whole life working for money, trading hours for dollars, forgetting the fact that your hours are the most precious resource that you have because you can't get more of them back. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. You see money, you can always make more money. So what we're talking about now is transitioning more of your mindset than anything else to the fact that your money can and should work for you. And how can your money work for you? There's so many different ways. You could pay off debt and recapture the money you're giving on your debt payment. You could invest that money. You could send that money out in forms of a loan as they did in The Richest Man in Babylon. Your money can be out there working. Now here's the difference between you and your money working. You are restricted in how much you can work. When you get sick, you can't work. There's only 24 hours in the day, which means there's so few hours to trade for work. You usually want to take time off. You have to eat. You have to go to the bathroom. You have to rest. Your money has none of those limitations. Your money can work for you 24 seven and it should be. And all you need to do is learn how your money can go to work for you. And what money do I mean? Well, first I mean the 10%. But also let's not forget about all that equity that's built up in your house. Right now, a lot of people have equity sitting lazy in the rafters of their house. That's the equity that you should be using. That money could be out working for you. And what do I mean by that? Because some of you are thinking, well, yeah, but a HELOC costs like eight or 9% right now. 
Well, it's actually a little less than that, but let's just think about it this way. Let's say you could lend your money out on privatemoneyclub.com and you could get 12%. Let's say you found a borrower that would allow you a first lien position, first lien on a mortgage, and you could lend that money at 12%. So if it costs you eight and you can make 12, how much are you actually making? You're making a four point spread, right? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, four points. That's your money working for you. Now, let's move on to the third law of wealth. I find this to be one of the most important ones because this is one of the ones that so few people abide by. And the third law of wealth says that you must protect your wealth. Now, how do you protect your wealth? Well, first off, a simple rule. Invest in things that you know, things that you like, and things that you understand. Do not invest in things that you don't understand, things that you don't know, and things that you don't even like. I find people all the time investing in the stock market or investing in, in cryptocurrencies, and they have no idea what they're investing in. Hey, as a matter of fact, if I were to ask them, hey, that stock that you're investing in, what, are the, what does that company do? What do they make? What problem do they solve? The average person can't tell you that. Then to even make it more complicated, then you got ETFs and then you got mutual funds, which are sometimes hundreds of different stocks. Can you tell me what all of those stocks do? No. So why do you invest in things that you don't know, like, and understand? You are failing to protect your wealth. And what you would find is that if you did only invest in things that you really knew, things that you really liked, and things that you really understood, your potential risks would go down substantially. Ask anybody that invests. Even Warren Buffett, he gets to understand the industry for the companies that he invests in very well. He gets to understand the company's fundamentals and their balance sheet and their profit and losses very well. He gets to understand what he's investing in before he ever puts a dollar in it because he understands the third law of wealth. Protect your wealth. So the fourth law of wealth basically states that you must be realistic and never get greedy. You see, wealth will flee its owner if the owner seeks unrealistic returns. So ask yourself that question. How many times have you invested in something just because the return seemed almost too good to be true? And how did that work out? Well, I can tell you many stories on my own where I've invested in things where that return was the sole reason I invested in it. And I've lost money that way because I didn't, first off, know, like, or understand what I was investing in. And even if I did, I was seeking unrealistic returns. I was being greedy. And every time you seek greed, typically the law states that your money will flee you. So what's the solution? I always like to say, get good at hitting base hits. Get good at bunting. You know, I will take a lower return that has less risk over a higher return with more risk any day of the week because I want consistent, predictable returns. I don't want the wild swings. Listen, Babe Ruth is a perfect example, although he's known as the home run hitter, the king of home runs, whatever they called him. You have to then look behind the curtain at how many times did he strike out. He was always swinging for the fences, always going for that unrealistic hit. Now he did get it every once in a while and he got known for that, but what most people would say about Babe Ruth is he struck out more than just about anybody else. So the question really is, do you have what it takes to strike out that many times to hit a home run? The answer for most of you is no. The fifth law of wealth as we move through is one of my favorites. It's giving. Wealth shall find you if your true goal is giving. You see, you've heard this a million times. If you give, you get, but you can't ever focus on the get. Another one said, you will get all you want in life if you help others get what they want first. This is very simple. Giving has always been the path because you can only get out of life what you give into it. You know, there's an interesting statement that I heard and it's all about this. You know, people always want first. They always want the fire before they actually put the wood on the fire. Think about that. How can you have the fire before you put the wood in the fireplace? And how can you have a fire before you light the wood on? The act of actually doing the work first is what's required. Same thing with wealth. For what you give in terms of money, in terms of hugs, in terms of love, it all comes back to giving. It's the number one law of all of them. 
and it probably trumps all other six laws, this one alone. But it also leads into the sixth law of wealth. And the sixth law of wealth is creating a legacy. Now, a lot of people have legacy a little bit backwards, if you ask me. When people think about a legacy, they think about the car that they're leaving to their kids. They think about the house they're leaving, the bank accounts, the 401ks, all the investments. They think about the material items. And you know, it brings me back to another thing when it comes to legacy. Isn't a legacy not so much the things we leave behind, but the knowledge that we give to our children? Think of those other five laws. Imagine if you taught your children, like I'm teaching my daughter through that letter that I wrote her. Imagine if you taught your children the six laws of wealth and you taught them how to live their life based on these laws. Wouldn't that be the ultimate legacy? Bruce Lee once said a statement. So when I think about legacy, I always think back to Bruce Lee and something that he taught his kids. And I want to read this to you. Bruce Lee said, Instead of buying your children all the things you never had, you should teach your children all the things you were never taught. Think about that. That is the ultimate legacy. But you see, we only put value on things that we pay for in today's world. Things that we buy, things that are easily replaced. When really the things we should put value on are the things that have been free, always been free to us. Love, our dreams, our integrity, our ethics, how we treat others, hugs. Think of all those things. Every one of them are free. And every one of them have more value than any material item you can buy will ever have. So when you think of your legacy, remember what Bruce Lee said. Remember the sixth law of wealth. The legacy is not the material items you leave behind. It's the knowledge that you pass. You will never be remembered the day you pass for the things you had. You'll be remembered for how you treated people, for the knowledge you left behind, for the things that you taught those around you. That is a fact because that is a law. Every one of these are the laws that are derived from George Cleason's book, The Richest Man in Babylon. You should read this book. You should also listen to my TEDx talk, which was the letter that I wrote to my daughter called Rethink Money. Check it out. And I think that will help give you some guiding light on these six laws. Now, really quickly, what I'd like to do is just read you the 10 rules to prosperity so that you then can apply them in your life. But before I do that, what I'd like to do is ask you for a favor. This is part of giving. What I'd like you to do is give me five seconds of your time by clicking that subscribe button. And when you click that subscribe button, what I'd also like to ask you to do is to smash that little bell up top because that will notify you every time I put out new content. Ouch. Sorry about that. Sometimes you got to smack people upside the head so that they actually know that these laws should be applied. So let's get into the 10 rules of prosperity. Here they are in order. Number one, money must remain in motion. Number two, uninterrupted compounding interest is one of the most powerful things in the financial universe. Number three, be in control of your money always. Number four, treat your money the same as you treat someone else's money or the traditional bank's money. Be an honest banker. Number five, pay yourself with interest. Number six, Recycle and recapture the money that you're giving away. Number seven, wealth takes time. Do not rush it. Number eight, don't let your money be lazy. Keep all your wealth moving, just like a raging river. It never sits still. Number nine, live below your means according to a well thought out budget. Don't let desires exceed earnings. And number 10, be your own bank. Be wary of using someone else's bank as it will erode your wealth. Folks, these are the six laws of wealth and the 10 rules to prosperity. How you choose to use these is up to you. But I apply these and I'm teaching these to my daughter. And all I can tell you is I feel she'll be a lot better off than I was just by that one simple lesson. 
Thanks for joining me for this episode, folks. We'll see you on the next one. And while you're at it, check this video out right here. It's all about mindset. We'll see you on the next one.